Hello, and welcome to our webinar for internship accreditation. This webinar is intended for applying internship sites and membership. We are the Internship Accreditation Oversight Committee. Members of the committee presenting today are myself, Michelle Townsend Barksdale, with Allie Stewart, Allison Sohenwall, and Stephanie Colaberadino. Under the initial strategic plan, the CLC created a task force to investigate the benefits and challenges of an accreditation program. This was the Internship Accreditation Task Force, or IATF. They were a diverse group of child life specialists, leaders, internship coordinators across many hospitals with varying sized internship programs. The IATF charge was to develop overall standards and expectations for the conduct and coverage of child life internship programs and to re recommend a process and procedures for ongoing accreditation, endorsement, or other level of recognition of a child life internship program by, by the CLC. The time frame was two years. The questions that the IATF asked themselves, what does the task force identify as the minimum standards for internships? How many hours should be recommended for minimum? Should there be a minimum number of rotations? The expectations, credentials of supervisors or preceptors. How do we ensure that all supervisors are competent in all the areas before supervising interns? And then we sought out the recommendations by the CLC. The questions led to a literature review which was comprehensive that would give our group direction. We then benchmarked similar professions who used accreditation. This list included social work, play, play therapy, recreation therapy, expressive arts, music therapy, art therapy, counseling, nursing, chaplains, psych or mental health, PTOT, student teaching, and other business models. The task force created a list of questions for benchmarking as well. Do you have an accredited internship? Does this type of quality give value to your hospital? Is it valued by joint commission? What are some outcomes of past interns? And how do the students know you have accredited, that you are accredited or value an intern, intern site? How do you accredit? Do you have site reviews? If so, how often? Is it rotating or just one time only? How do you maintain accreditation? The task force then further completed a cost-benefit analysis, reviewed the CLC practice analysis, and reviewed current internship curriculum guidelines. After background work, a framework was formed for accreditation. What is accreditation? An assurance that a program meets the minimum standards and requirements set forth. It is a voluntary process of self-study and external review intended to evaluate, enhance, and publicly recognize quality child life and clinical internship programs. This process is intended to evaluate the extent to which a program meets the competencies defined by the essential internship curriculum topics and the practice analysis and to promote the interest of students through continuous quality improvement of learning and professional practice. Why should a program seek accreditation? There are many benefits in having an accredited clinical internship. The Child Life Council discusses several benefits for child life specialists to obtain certification. Many of the reasons for obtaining accreditation are similar to the reasons for obtaining child life certification. Professional identity. An accredited clinical internship will attract exceptional interns and job candidates. Also, the internship accreditation process may help your team explore and highlight many parts of your internship, including quality assurance, the evidence-based practice used by your team, and program self-evaluation. The recognition. Achieve formal acknowledgement of your internship accomplishments. Also enjoy global recognition as your accredited internship is highlighted at various learning institutions across the world. Advancement. An accredited clinical internship may help your interns benefit from enhanced career opportunities with the potential for an increased salary. Also, the advancement of the internship through accreditation brings improvement of patient safety. Respect. Improve your program's credibility by validating your internship's specialized knowledge and expertise to peers, management, and other inter interdisciplinary colleagues. An accredited internship may also bring enhanced recognition of the overall profession, out, the professional outlook, and importance of the child life profession. Growth. 
An accredited internship program prepares your interns for continued professional excellence through strong education and professional development. The accreditation process asks institutions and systems to critically evaluate their vision, strategies, priorities, and leadership prog programs and resources. The process of earning and maintaining accreditation provides internships with clear and compelling direction for the implementing changes to move toward excellence. Passion. Demonstrate your program's commitment to advancing the child life profession. Students who successfully complete an internship from an accredited program have access to enhanced opportunities in employment, graduate education, and global mobility. Pride. Enjoy elevated self-esteem and satisfaction in knowing your internship meets the criteria of accreditation. Also enjoy a sense of pride in knowing your internship strives to improve standards and quality care. The students who are educated in this level elevated learning environment will be more equipped and competent in their interactions with patients, families, and hospital personnel. What is the cost? Clinical internships seeking accreditation are required to pay an application fee in order to initiate and maintain accreditation status. This fee helps fund the general administration of the accreditation process, which includes activities such as management of application materials, reviewing of applications, record keeping, and communication about the accreditation decisions. These fees also help maintain licensure and support operating costs of the online system. The standard fee at which is payable at time of application is $1,500. The appeals fee is $250, which will cover cost if a clinical internship is denied accreditation and the applying clinical internship would like to appeal the decision. There will be an annual maintenance fee and a five-year renewal fee required. The amounts of these fees are still being determined. They are based on required workforce within the CLC and the maintenance of the online system. On this screen, you will see our timeline. There are 55 programs who have applied for accreditation through the lottery process to date. This lottery process was used to place the programs into qu quarter cohorts. The 55 programs fill slots from January 2016 to April 2017. The following lottery will be open to apply January 1st through March 1st, 2016, with the lottery drawing between April 1st through the 15th, 2016. The task force completed its job and the uh, Oversight Committee carries out its work. The Internship Accreditation Oversight Committee, or IAOC, manages the clinical internship accreditation process in collaboration with the CLC staff. CLC committee member or board member during the past five years was required to be part of the IAOC. Also, they demonstrated leadership within the Child Life Council and or within their individual programs. They have experience with internship coordination, supportive of the strategic plan and the clinical internship accreditation, and a minimum of eight years as a certified child life specialist. After the three-year term as a reviewer, past reviewers can be invited to become part of the IAOC committee. The responsibilities of the IAOC include selection of both the reviewers and education of the reviewers. Intake, which means to accept the accreditation reviewer and clinical internship applications. Distribution of the accreditation reviewer applications to members of the IAOC. Communication with clinical internship programs, reviewers, and with membership of CLC. Publication for membership of CLC via the website, newsflash, bulletin article, blog posts, and webinar. Management of the lottery to assign due dates for clinical internship program maintenance and education. Managing the appeals process, as well as acting as chief reviewers. Members of the IAOC will act as chief reviewers during the accreditation process. A chief reviewer will review subsection A only of the application to determine if the requirement has been met. Chief reviewers are privy to the submitting clinical internship's name. Accreditation reviewers, clinical internship accreditation reviewers are made up of certified child life specialists who applied and were selected 
to objectively review clinical internships for eligibility of accreditation. Reviewers are expected to review a minimum of two applications per quarter. The qualifications for these reviewers are that they are a certified child life specialist, currently a member of CLC, they have a minimum of eight years or 16,000 hours paid experience as a certified child life specialist, they have experience in leadership or management or as an internship coordinator, uh, they will have three letters of reference emphasizing communication skills. They will adhere to strict confidentiality of all of the information reviewed, agree to training in the review process, and agree to excuse him or herself from reviews which reflect any conflict of interest, dual relationship, or ethical dilemma. A clinical internship for interns in the field of child life that leads to demonstrated competence in all domains. This internship should include training and education in a manner that results in entry-level professional competence of the intern. A clinical internship can be offered at one site or as a consortium, which we'll discuss more a little bit later. The clinical internship coordinator maintains professional certification, has at least 8,000 paid hours of experience as a CCLS, prior to coordinating an internship experience, ensures a systematic evaluation process, including criteria for scoring evaluation, has weekly meetings with the intern, ensures a systematic process for dismissal, follows the CLC internship experience offer and acceptance recommended deadlines, provides oversight and guidance to clinical rotation supervisors. A clinical rotation supervisor also maintains professional certification, has at least 4,000 hours of paid experience prior to supervising interns, assumes responsibility for educational development and guidance of interns, supervises a maximum of one intern at a time, has weekly meetings with the intern, and has daily contact with the intern where both the supervisor and the intern are working at least 80% of the same hours. A Child Life Clinical Internship Program Consortium is when two or more independent institutions or organizations combine to provide a clinical internship. The consortium must consider itself one clinical internship. A formal agreement must exist between the two or more organizations that jointly sponsor this clinical internship. One individual must serve as the consortium clinical internship coordinator and have primary responsibility for the program and communications with the CLC staff and or the IAOC. Each member organization in the consortium site must designate a clinical rotation supervisor for the program within that organization who's employed by the organization and meets all CLC clinical supervision criteria. We're now going to start going over the application section. Section one is the application cover page. Section two is the individual exemplars. Section three is the attachment of supporting documents and narratives. Section one is the cover page of your application and is to be completed by the clinical internship coordinator. This serves as your contact page. On the bottom of this page, your internship coordinator will sign and read the statement of understanding. Section two, individual exemplars. Each item on the application should be filled out with a narrative and a list of supporting documents that demonstrate how the clinical internship meets the expectations for accreditation. Subsection A, clinical supervision, and subsection B, internship requirements and structure, are mandatory for accreditation. If the clinical internship is unable to meet all expectations included, accreditation will not be granted. Subsection C is divided into three domains, professional responsibility, 
assessment, and clinical interventions. Each section will be scored against a weighted scoring grid. There is a threshold score needed for accreditation. It is understood that a clinical internship may not meet every expectation in this section, however, can still earn accreditation. Subsection 2, or Section 2, Subsection A is, a, is mandatory for accreditation, and this applies to the clinical internship coordinator and clinical rotation supervisor requirements. These requirements have been addressed and outlined previously in this presentation. Section 2, subsection B. These are also mandatory for accreditation and applies to the applicant requirements and internship structure. The, ac the applicant requirements, is our internship site will only accept students who have 100 hours of experience with well infants, children, youth, and or families. 100 hours of experience with infants, children, youth, and or families in stressful situations, healthcare settings, and uh, or programs that are designed for children with special needs. Completed the academic coursework uh, portion of the eligibility as, uh, assessment. For internship structure, the internship experience offers a combined 600 hours of clinical experience, a minimum of two rotations that are at least six weeks, 240 hours in length with one clinical rotation supervisor per rotation. Attachment of supporting documents and narratives. Fill out the narrative section in the online application. Then attach all supporting documents within the specified area in the online application. Each item on the application should be filled out with a narrative and a list of supporting documents that demonstrate how the clinical internship meets the expectations for accreditation. The supporting documents are files that demonstrate how the clinical internship meets the eligibility requirements for accreditation and support narrative descriptions. Attach all supporting documents within the specified area on the online application. More than one supporting document can be used for competency. Fill out the narratives for each for, fill out the narrative section for each item with a narrative that best describes the clinical internship's practice to meet that specific requirement. There is a limit to 500 words. On this page, you'll see an example of a narrative. It's at the bottom of the screen, and it has um, examples of what play looks like and how that program addresses that competency. And in the right-hand top corner, you'll see the supporting document list. And those are the listings of the files that are being added to the online program to address those issues. Professional responsibilities, first competency. This section is divided into three domains of professional responsibility assessment and clinical in intervention. Within the domain of professional responsibility, the applying program will include evidence of how they support intern learning and skills in the related categories of professional development, professional relationships, documentation, education, administrative responsibilities, and volunteer management. Specific learning experiences are listed within each of these categories for programs to demonstrate how they meet the individual competency criteria. Within the domain of assessment, the applying program will include evidence of how they support intern learning and skills in the related categories of stress potential, developmental variables, and psycho psychosocial variables. 
Specific learning experiences are listed within each of these categories as well for programs to demonstrate how they meet these competencies. Within the domain of clinical interventions, the applying program will include evidence of how they support intern learning and skills in related categories of play, support, integrated and or expressive therapies, technology, palliative and end of life care, coping strategies, environment, social interactions, advocacy, patients and family education and preparation, therapeutic relationships, and patient and family centered care. For a completed application, identify one contact person who serves as the clinical internship coordinator. Include detailed narratives of how the clinical internship meets each expectation as seen on the previous slides. Attach documents that support each expectation when applicable. Each section must be completed in its, ent in its entirety for accreditation to be considered. What does scoring look like? The reviewers will indicate a score ranging from 0 to 3, along with meaningful written feedback. 3 means it, you exceed the expectation. 2, it's acceptable, sufficient evidence was present. 1, needs improvement, insufficient evidence present. Or 0, no evidence is present. When each competency is receiving a 0 to 3, it will then be multiplied by weight. The total at the end of each domain must pass the threshold. Professional responsibility, the number is 42. Ass assessment is 30. And intervention, being the largest domain, will be 96. The reviewer is encouraged to offer feedback when needed. And the changes that need to be made if competency was given a 0 or 1 score is suggested for the reviewer to give feedback and also praise for an exceptional job. This screen is a view from a reviewer standpoint, so you can see the score given in the top right corner, which was a 2. And the online system will automatically multiply it by the, the determined weight for a final score. As you see, the weight was 4 and the, the total score was 8. At the bottom of the screen, you can see an example of feedback that a reviewer can give. What happens next? First, you submit your application and supporting documents using the online system. Then two content reviewers will, will assess subsections B and C. They are blind to what, the, what site they are reviewing. They will not know what site they are reviewing. They work independently of each other. They review and score all sections of B and C and provide a detailed report with feedback and recommendations back to the chief reviewer within six to eight weeks is recommended for them. When a chief reviewer receives the application, they will review subsection A. In this subsection, the chief reviewer will know the site who is applying for accreditation. They will have approximately one week to review that section. If there has been a discrepancy between the content reviewers, the application will remain with the chief reviewer for that person to have two weeks to review the application and scores to make a final determination. Accreditation decisions with feedback will be communicated to applicants within the quarter, depending on application date submission. So on this screen, you can see that we have uh, laid out the accreditation application process in its entirety. You can see that after step one, once you've completed your application online through the CLC website, we estimate that it will take approximately 14 weeks to move through all of the steps. Once your application has been reviewed and a decision has been made, there are three possible outcomes to that decision. The first outcome is that your application is accepted accreditation as is, which means it has met all expectations in subsections A and B, and all domains in subsection C earn the threshold score needed for accreditation and that clinical internships will be listed on the CLC website with recognition of accreditation. The second possible outcome is that the application is extended pending edits. This means that all expectations in subsections A and B are met or can be met with minimal action 
on the part of the applicant within a 60 calendar day period or eight weeks upon receipt of status. That domains in subsection C earn the threshold score needed for accreditation or the reviewer determines that accreditation can be earned with minimal action on the part of the applicant within a 60 calendar day period upon receipt of status. These clinical internships will have 60 days or eight weeks to make the suggested changes to the clinical internship and resubmit for accreditation at no cost. The third possible outcome is that accreditation is denied. This means the expectations in subsection A and B are not met or it is not expected that the applicant can meet these expectations within a 60 calendar day period upon receipt of status. That domains in subsection C do not meet the threshold score needed for accreditation or it is not expected that the applicant can earn the thres threshold scores within a 60 calendar day period upon receipt of status, and that clinical internships may choose to either appeal the decision following the appeals process or reapply after 12 months from the receipt of decision with recommended changes in place. This requires a full accreditation fee. The appeals process. The Child Life Council Board of Directors has approved a process through which clinical internships may appeal a denial of accreditation. An adverse accreditation decision is defined as a denial or revocation of accreditation status to an applicant of the CLC Clinical Internship Accreditation Program. Accreditation decisions may be appealed by applicants who feel that the decision was not accurate. To file an appeal of an adverse accreditation decision, the applicant must initiate the appeals process. They must file by the applicant it must be filed by the applicant via a letter within 60 days or eight weeks of notification. Letters are to include the grounds for which they are appealing, components that were identified as deficient, and the reason for disagreement. The Internship Accreditation Oversight Committee has two weeks to respond to the appeal. There's a $250 processing fee necessary to complete the appeals process. There is a new panel of reviewers for this process, and the appeals review may be the following quarter or a quarter at a later time, depending on reviewer availability. Upon completion of its review, the panel will either uphold or reverse the decision to deny accreditation and will mail a decision letter to the clinical internship primary contact. The decision is final and binding. Complete documentation of each appeal and outcome will be maintained along with the clinical internship application in the Child Life Council office. In the event of a failure to submit within the required time frame, the letter of appeal, the appeal fee, or the grounds for appeal, the appeal will be dismissed and the clinical internship reviewer's decision will become final. Maintenance and Renewal Plan. Here, this will be submitted to the Internship Accreditation Oversight Committee. There are two sections for this. In the Annual Maintenance Report, there's Section A, which is a Statement of Understanding. It is signed yearly by the contact person of the clinical internship site, and it's similar to the Statement of Understanding used by certification. Section B includes questions. It's only completed if the clinical internship has had significant changes in the past 12 months or anticipates changes in the next 12 months. The five-year renewal is a report which lets us know the number of interns seen in your program over the past five years. We recognize that this is a new endeavor for you and for our profession as a whole. We are here to help with any questions you may have along the way. Please visit our webpage for further information and email us with questions. A member of the Internship Accreditation Oversight Committee will return your email as soon as possible. And lastly, we'd like to thank everyone for attending the webinar. And again, if you do have any questions, please use the webpage for further information or send us an email. Thank you very much and have a great day.